Hey everyone, Chris here from Westside Tech Solutions. Today, we're comparing two popular headless CMS options, Payload CMS and Strapi. If you're a small business owner trying to decide between these two platforms, this comparison will help you make the right choice based on real implementation experience. I've used a few different CMS platforms extensively with some clients, and there are significant differences that impact your bottom line, development time, and long-term scalability. Before we really dive in, just a quick overview. Both Payload CMS and Strapi are JavaScript-based headless CMS platforms that give you content management with API flexibility. If you haven't heard of them before, Strapi has been around a little bit longer and has a larger community, while Payload is newer, but it's gaining quite a bit of momentum rapidly due to its developer-friendly approach and powerful features. Today, we're gonna to be comparing them across several key factors that matter most to small businesses. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is money. For small businesses, cost is always a really important factor. So Strapi offers a free community edition that's open source with some limitations, and their paid plans start at $15 per seat per month for the basic tier, which gives you some additional features. Single sign-on is another add-on for another $50 per seat per month. Payload takes a slightly different approach. It's completely open source with no hidden fees or paid tiers for features. You only pay for your hosting costs, meaning all of the paid features of Strapi including single sign-on, are not behind a paywall. Another important cost difference comes in implementation and maintenance. Because with Strapi, you'll need separate hosting for your CMS and your front-end application. On the other hand, Payload 3.0 integrates natively with Next.js, allowing you to host both your CMS and front-end server on a single server, helping you cut down on your hosting costs. So setting up Strapi is closer to a wizard-based experience and feels a little bit more plug and play. This might seem appealing initially, but it creates less flexibility down the road. Here's a quick preview on how config is modified in the form of adding a field. In Strapi, if you go to the content type builder, you'll see we have all these fields on our collection types. So if I were to create a new collection type, let's just call it a post. And if I were to continue and then add maybe a title to that post, I can say that short text, sure, add another field. So currently I have the option of, you know, text, rich text, passwords, you know, there's 12 or so in here by default, but now you can add custom fields from plugins that are on the Strapi marketplace. So this vastly expands the type of fields that you can have. Currently, you can see we don't have any custom fields in here. So as you can see, fields are added to collections via the UI. Payload's approach is slightly different. It uses a code first approach with configuration files. While this requires slightly more developer knowledge upfront, it makes version control, debugging, and customization much more straightforward. You can also use it for things like programmatically populating dropdown fields and more. For small businesses working with a developer or an agency, the payload approach actually can save you time and money in the long run because changes are more predictable and testable. Now talking just a little bit on how data is queried, for me, this was one of the biggest practical differences when implementing projects. Strapi uses a custom query builder that feels a bit restrictive once you need anything complex. This is what it looks like here on the screen. Basically, you make this JSON object and serialize it so that it can be used as a query string param in a GET request. While this approach makes sense, and I'm sure it's really easy to work with once you're familiar with it, I personally found this to be a bit counterintuitive. While I was evaluating these two CMS platforms, I experimented with querying for deeper nested relationships, and I just quite couldn't get it working how I wanted to. Yes, I'll admit I could have spent more time on this and mastered it, but querying data in payload is just so much more intuitive to me. And this is how querying data looks in payload. Since payload has a native integration with Next.js, we don't actually need to make an HTTP request to query data. We can use payload's local API to query the database directly. This is just another big advantage of this integration with Next.js and having your whole project on just one server. Payload lets you write straightforward queries that are more intuitive if you're already familiar with MongoDB, making complex data relationships much easier to work with. Next, we're going to talk about the Next.js integration. If you're building a modern website or web application, 
Next.js is very often a go-to framework. This is where payload really shines. With payload 3.0, Next.js integration is built right in. You can have your CMS and website on the same code base and server. This means lower hosting costs, better performance, simpler deployment, and it's easier to maintain. With Strapi, if you want to use Next.js, you'll always be maintaining two separate applications, which can add complexity and cost. So as far as customization and flexibility, both CMSs allow plenty of customization, but they approach it a little bit differently. Strapi uses a plugin system that feels more like a traditional CMS. This can be pretty familiar, plug and play, but it could be a little bit limiting. Payload CMS has a few plugins as well, but it mostly relies on its hook system and code first approach, meaning virtually unlimited customization. You won't really ever be fighting against the platform to make it do what you want to do, which can be the case sometimes with some plugins. For businesses, this means that your CMS can grow with you instead of becoming a limitation as your needs evolve. So what's your CMS of choice? If you need something with a larger community or a more traditional admin first approach, Strapi might be a good choice. But for small businesses that I work with, I always recommend Payload CMS because of the lower cost of ownership, the better Next.js integration, the more intuitive querying, its customization, and simpler hosting setup. I've helped several businesses implement CMS systems, and I've seen firsthand how payload projects tend to be more affordable and fit with my clients' goals. Do you have questions about implementing either CMS for your business? Drop them in the comments or reach out to me directly. If you found this comparison helpful, please like and subscribe for more practical tech advice. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.